Okay guys, time to talk about batteries. And in this particular time, we're gonna be talking about compression plates. These right here are the LEV60-F batteries, right? They can, about 74 amp hours, they can do about oh, close to 200 amps continuous and 600 amps burst uh, up for up to 10 seconds, right? So these, uh, there's very little info on these. We haven't found a spec sheet for these yet. So we don't know uh, much about them, right? We know they're lithium iron phosphate and we know those specs, performance specs, right? That's it. Uh, we also know that these came in BMW cars, uh, the i3 maybe and the i7, I think, so, among others, have these under the hood. Well, in a separate compartment, right? But these are the 12 volt battery that runs the 12 volt stuff for the car, right? And the videos that I've seen of them, uh, they show them being compressed in a small box that makes them look just like a typical 12 volt battery, right? But much lighter and much more capable because they have lithium iron phosphate cells inside. So what we've decided to do is make compression plates for these cells uh, so that people can compress them when they buy them and they're gonna use them in their application. Uh, four of these will make 12 volts, eight of these like this will make 24 volts. And of course, you double this up, you put another row over there on the other side, and that will make 48 volts. And so those, uh, we anticipate those are gonna be the most popular use cases for these batteries. These are lithium iron phosphate, they're long lasting, they're very, very powerful. Uh, and so those are the most typical standards, right? And so that's why we're making these. So today I'm gonna to show you how to put this together, this compression plate kit right here on eight of these for a 24 volt uh, battery, but the same will apply for the other ones. This size of plate will work the same for a 12 volt or a 24, but for the 48, of course, we'll have to be double the length of this and we don't have those yet. They're still, uh, they're coming from the, uh, you know, the, the laser shop or whatever that makes them. And then we'll, I'll show a separate video on how to make that one in there. So let's start with this build. It's very, it's gonna be very, very easy. Okay, so first things you have to do is you have to align your cells like this, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, right? So going back and forth, uh, unless you're doing some kind of other, maybe you're doing an eight cell 12 volt battery, then you would have two positives here and maybe two negatives here, and then you're gonna go down like that, right? So two in parallel. Of course, these combinations are endless. You could do, these are like Legos, you can do all kinds of things. But if you're just gonna build a regular 24 volt uh, battery right now, then all of these eight cells will have to be in series. So you'll have to go, you know, positive negative kind of thing. Then the next thing is because these are, uh, I tested the, 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 the case, right? This is an aluminum, case that is out here it's not positive or negative it's kind of in between but it is electrically charged by a very weak weak uh, amount and so because of that then you got to make sure that they the cases are not touching to each other because i think they will over or they will discharge the cell eventually or faster than it should right it will create leakage and stuff and so for that purpose then we have to isolate them from each other and yeah they have this uh you know thin plastic uh, shrink wrap here that will do the job it definitely does the job but if you're gonna put these in a harsh environment uh like an automobile for example for like an rv or something 24 volt is uh perfect for that case use case then you might want to use another barrier between them so that these will not chafe and they will not touch because you might see a problem later down the line if you have these in a application where there's a lot of vibrations or there's a lot of heat temperature ranges going up and down you know th there's things that might break down this thin uh, membrane right here. Uh, I think this is PCB, P PDC membrane, right? So what I suggest you using is something like this. This is uh, fish paper, I think they call it. And I don't know the qualities of this paper. I don't know if this is the best material to use, but it is very commonly used on battery applications, battery pack applications. These, a lot of batteries are wrapped in this. A lot of batteries are used to isolate 
things within the battery. And, uh, and so that's why I picked that today to do it, right? This is very, very cheap. You can find it a lot of places. We'll put a link in the description of this video so you can find it. Another material that is used is just regular FR4, right? Which is this uh, fiberglass board that is used to make, well, PCBs, right? And so you could make this exact same shape in there. I guess I'll make a file and I'll share it uh, publicly so that you can do that. Of course, this will cost more than the paper but uh, it probably is maybe a better choice. Now it will be thicker, and so we'll add more length to your battery in here, and that's a very thing to keep in mind, right? But uh, today we're gonna use this fish paper. You have to put it between every single cell here to isolate them from each other. I've done that, these already, and then I have two more that will do the sides here, the very ends. Next, what you'll have to do is then install the bus bars here and these bus i mean this bus bars the uh, compression plates these are just about eighth of an inch steel plates that are bent on the bottom like that right and that's so that they could use well two things so that they could be really sturdy by adding a bent to a plate like this it adds uh strength i think it about doubles the, the strength the rigidity this way right and so what happens is that it becomes really uh, hard to bend this now, right? Which is what you need. You need a really stiff plate to push these like that. But it also adds as a flange right here so that you can uh, secure your battery into another surface, for example, right? If you're gonna mount, whatever they're gonna mount this, maybe into an electrical box or a case or something like that, then you could use these holes that are on the bottom of this plate to, to attach them there, right? Um, now, also, there's a downside to this because this adds a little bit of uh, size to the battery, right? And so maybe if you have dimensional constraints, like uh, a lot of the times do, then this might not work. Maybe I'll just make a plate that doesn't have this for the future. If you need that, post it in the comments, and if there's enough interest there, I'll make another plate like that, right? But for this one, we do both sides. We put one on this side and one on that side. Next, what you will need is to use uh, all thread. And the kit will come with these. It's gonna be oversized because depending on what material you use here is gonna determine the over the overall length of your battery pack, right? So there, these are gonna be about 24 inches for the 24 volt and about one, uh, 12 inches for the, uh, for the 12 volt kit. So you put this in here. And then you put the nut right in there. And then you do all four. Right, so the next thing to do is just to tighten the, uh, the nuts here, right? Now, there's no spec sheet for these, like I said, so we don't know what kind of compression they need. We don't know if it's two pounds or 10 pounds or it's 20 pounds, right? So right now we're just gonna compress them uh, so that they're secure and they don't move around. So you can move this battery pack as a single unit and they don't slide or anything like that, right? And so, okay, last we will have to put the bus bars here, right? And so we just put those in there, most positive and then like that. Now we're gonna have these bus bars available in copper and aluminum, depending on how much power you want out of there. And of course, you could also get the full board that is gonna be able to go in here, and then this makes it really easy to, for you to do the wiring for the BMS, right? Uh, and so you have choices here and how you want to finish this battery. You could just use regular bus bars like this, or you could use that bus bar plate that goes, it just kind of simplifies everything. But the compression plates will work the same whichever way you decide to go uh, for busing these batteries here, right? So there you go. This is very, very simple way of uh, compressing these cells. Now it's a single battery that you can attach it to whatever surface you got on the bottom. You could potentially attach this to the wall too, right? You just use big enough screws on these plates right here. There's four holes in here. Uh, you could definitely drill these bigger if you wanna put bigger uh, uh, screws to put it in the wall, but you definitely could, uh, could hold this 
into the wall. These are very strong. And then these are, you also have a third hole in here. So you can use another, you know, three um, all thread bolts going to connect these. If, uh, again, if you're gonna install these in a very uh, harsh environment where there's a lot of vibrations or something like that, and you need that extra hardware to secure these uh, effectively, right? All right, so there you go. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. The links to all of these components to make this battery pack are going to be in the description of this video, all right? We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. All right, so as you can see, uh, you could build these here on the wall, right? So that you don't have to carry the big heavy battery pack and then you just assemble it in here. And then uh, at the end, you just cut these because these are long, right? They're gonna come long because depending on what you're using between here, it's gonna affect the, the overall length. But you could also just build this on the bench and then just bring it up here, you know, screw it to the wall. But I was able to do this by myself. They're not too heavy, so you could do it both ways. Also, by the way, this is uh, two 24 volt modules. If you wanna use these in series and uh, use them as a 48, you would have to get the positive from one and then the negative from the other one and then just tie in the positive to the negative between the two packs, right? Obviously, a much better way would be to take this one and flip it around and then you end up with the positive and the negative here and then you just bridge the top over here right and that is exactly what the 48 volt uh version of this of this bus bars is there's just two of these set side like that and they're just and so then you'll get uh, positive and negative right here and then you get one single connector uh for the bms here but of course you could use these uh two of these to make 48 uh you could parallel these ones to make double the capacity right on a 24 volt system you could use four of the 12 volts also and set them in series to do 48 or in series two of them to do 24. these are there's many ways you can go about the uh building battery banks with these cells these are raw cells right so i'm just making uh, compression plates and then bus bars so that to make it easier for people to use them. Uh, and so, uh, hopefully this product, this, this, uh, compression plates, uh, serves that purpose because you are able to compress them and install them into the wall or install them in a box metal enclosure. You could put this inside of a metal enclosure, by the way, uh, which is uh, much better. Having stuff that's exposed like this is not the best way to do it. And I know a lot of the DIY community has been doing this for a long time. And I guess if you can keep stuff from falling in there and shorten it out, I guess you can get away with it. But I always like to put stuff in metal boxes because then that's uh, kind of foolproof. If you have some kid or a dog that come in here and pee on this thing or some kid touching bus bars or whatever like they're not gonna get electrocuted that sort of stuff right and so i think a lot of the codes also require uh depending on where you're on the world but here in the states i think a lot of the codes require any electrical stuff to be uh in a enclosure metal enclosure be sealed so that there's nothing exposed there right so keep that in mind uh you will have to do some homework and you know search what your local codes are about man that thing is loud uh but there you go this is uh just an example of how you would put one of these either in a house or an RV because it's 24 volts, perfect for RV, right? Okay, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.